Tonight, hate at home. A rise in anti-Semitic and white supremacist activity in Florida is causing concern. This is Nightside. I'm Carolina Lee. And I'm Dave Wagner. In 2021, the Southern Poverty Law Center tracked 733 hate groups all across the country, including Hawaii. Taking a closer look at Florida, they tracked 53 hate groups in our state. There's a dark history of hate in the Sunshine State, especially in the Tampa Bay area. And tonight, some of those who live with Nazis and those whose families were killed by them are joining together to sound the alarm about hate at home. It was in the early 60s, living in an apartment oozing of intimacy. It was a home filled with love. Living together, watching television together, reading together. Hiding a life full of lies. It was all a lie. My father was not only Holocaust, he was a unrepentant Nazi. A place where the warm words of the present so this warm feeling and fuzzy feeling of the family would collide with the dark deeds of the past. My father will always be in my mind, the good and the bad and the ugly. In North Miami Beach, you'll find a physician with an unorthodox life. When did you learn about your father's dark past? First of all, I didn't know what the past was. 77 years after the end of World War II, the life and legacy of Bern Volschläger's father is becoming increasingly clear. He deliberately killed Jews, and he knew about the killing and murder of Jews, and lied to me. Arthur Volschläger was a Nazi tank commander. So my father signed an order to have Russian prisoners of war killed systematically against any violation of Geneva Convention. In return, the Knight's Cross was personally pinned on him by Adolf Hitler. Do you consider your father a murderer? Yes. He deliberately killed people. Byrne vividly remembers his father's anti-Semitic rants. What we did as Germans, we cleaned up the Lichloch, the dirt. We cleaned it all up so that your generation can live in a world without Jews. And decades after his dad's hateful rhetoric, Byrne recognizes the distressing dog whistle in Florida today. Citizenship is reserved for white persons of good moral character. Neo-Nazi demonstrators in Tampa channeling a familiar refrain from a fewer long ago. Tampa Bay has a haunting history of hatred. And some of those who carried out orders from Adolf Hitler found a refuge to retire in the Florida sun. We all retire here. You know, the, the ones with blood in your hands and the ones who are innocent. John Loftus of St. Pete was a prosecutor with the Office of Special Investigations, the Justice Department's Nazi hunting unit. Yeah, when I was a prosecutor, about 10% of all the Nazi war crimes cases in America came out of the Tampa Bay area. Are you guilty of what you're accused of by the Justice Department? Dr. Adolf Milius of St. Pete Beach was one of those cases. 25 years ago, I caught up with him at Tampa International. as he fled the country to avoid prosecution. Headed home to the scene of his alleged war crimes, Vilnius, Lithuania. He wasn't happy to see me. Did you come to Lithuania to avoid prosecution, Dr. Milius? I came to avoid you. I knew all those people that you showed me on the film. They, none of them is alive. 97-year-old Mary Wygotsky of St. Petersburg remembers her Nazi neighbors well both in Tampa Bay and in Lithuania. I am a Holocaust survivor. Her entire family was rounded up by men like Dr. Milius. They killed everybody. Shot to death in the nearby pits of Panari. I was everybody. I was my father, brother, two little sisters, and my mother. For decades, Mary has sounded the alarm about hate in the Sunshine State. How can we eliminate this hatred? The hatred now is now growing all over. An anti-defamation league report confirms neo-Nazi and white supremacist groups are on the rise. Last year, 190 reported anti-Semitic incidents in Florida and 186 incidents of white supremacist propaganda. This year, flyers spray paint, and neo-Nazi demonstrators outside a conservative youth summit in Tampa. The liars, the deniers, 
and the distorters of the Holocaust. We must now fight as long as we can. Inside these envelopes, Mary keeps some of the hate mail she's received for being vocal. I am fearless because I know if I went through hell and I faced death so many times, nothing can happen to me. And the closer I came to this family of choice, the more I removed myself from a family of origin. For Bern Volschläger, the sins of his father would lead to a journey, not for atonement, but toward Judaism. I thought conversion is the only way for me to show and demonstrate that I'm different. This son of a Nazi commander converted to Judaism and joined the Israeli army. What was your dad's reaction when he found out you converted to Judaism? He was enraged not only because what I did was done. He was enraged how that would affect his family, our family. Enraged that it tarnished his imitation. And he actually called me a traitor, a dirty traitor. I was prohibited from attending his funeral. Arthur Volschläger died in 1987, his coffin surrounded by soldiers of the German army. Your father never apologized for his sins? No, nor did I know of. He actually, the opposite, insinuated that Jews are not people. They are animals, they need to be removed like garbage. Byrne never reconciled with his parents, but has made peace with his pedigree. I threw my past in the virtual chamber, th threw the door shut. The family he thought he knew, simply a facade. He was a trained murderer. That has him wary of our future. There's more anti-Semitism arising, not because I'm a pessimist, but a realist. If intolerance will prevail, then goodbye America. More than 400,000 Americans died defeating Hitler and his Nazis. In a strange twist, many of those who fought, many of those who survived concentration camps, and some of those who carried out the Nazi atrocities found a place together here in the Bay Area. The neo-Nazis we are seeing today are a powerful reminder that past is prologue.